In a secluded Taoist temple, Anxia has been raised and trained since he was abandoned as a baby. One day his master asks him to fight every other monk in the temple in order to decide who will leave, since they can't feed everyone anymore. Anxia defeats all his fellow monks with ease, but to his surprise, winning equals leaving because it means he's finally strong enough not to need training anymore. Besides, his master thinks it's time for Anxia to see what the real world is like. When Anxia finally makes it to the city, he's overwhelmed by it and quickly gets in trouble because he doesn't know how to cross the street. By using his martial arts skills, he dodges cars and ends up showing off a little, earning him the admiration of the crowd. One of them even tosses a coin at him, but this isn't enough to buy food, and by the time night falls, Anxi is starving. When he sees Dr. Shui leave a restaurant with a food package, Anxi decides to steal it from him, causing Shui to start chasing him through town on his bicycle. Eventually they arrive at the river, and while Anxi jumps out of the way just in time, Shui falls into the water. Anxi doesn't hesitate to save him, and as thanks, Shui lets him have the food. He also finds Anxi to be amusing and a pure soul, so he decides to take him back to his pharmacy to make him his apprentice. The doctor lives with his wife Mrs. Shui, who doesn't pay much attention to her husband and prefers to hang out with her brother-in-law. At least she doesn't complain about Anxia's presence and also loves it when Anxia entertains the couple with his antics during meals. Dr. Shui sells medicine in his pharmacy but also sees patients, and Anxia learns how to help him with both. His martial arts skills come in handy when it comes to distracting people in pain, especially crying kids. At the end of each day, Dr. Shui pays Anxia for his help, but half of his earnings go into buying love tonic from his brother Dao Rong whose business isn't doing very well. One afternoon, Shui learns that Dao Rong has sold the shop for the value of a precious ring, which makes Shui furious because both their shops had been a family inheritance. Dao Rong doesn't care though, and he reminds Shui that he gave up monkhood for a woman, so he can't exactly talk. Dr. Shui leaves the shop in a huff, thus Anxia goes after him to ask for an explanation. It turns out Dr. Shui used to be a monk at a temple just like Anxia, but one day, he saw an incredibly beautiful woman praying and decided to follow her to make her notice him. Eventually that woman became Mrs. Shui, and the monk left everything to become a doctor and work hard to provide for her. The only reason why Shui would regularly buy the love tonic was to help his brother with his debt, but obviously Dao Rong doesn't care about hard work. Later in the evening, Anxia hears a weird noise and climbs on a ladder to take a look into Shui's room, only to discover the couple's getting frisky in bed. When they're done, the doctor shares with his wife how worried he's about his brother's future, but he refuses to give him a single coin again. He also promises Mrs. Shui she'll never have to worry about money because he has a bunch of savings hidden on the wall behind the wardrobe. The next day, Anxia goes to get more love tonic for Shui, but when he makes it to the shop, he hears noises that indicate Mrs. Shui is cheating on the doctor with his brother. He doesn't tell the doctor about it but he does confront Mrs. Shui later, yet Mrs. Shui only tells him to stay out of her business. Sometime later, Dao Rong cries to Mrs. Shui about his debts and how he thinks about ending things, which convinces Mrs. Shui to help. Dao Rong also gives her a stronger kind of love tonic for the doctor. When she returns home, Mrs. Shui tries to steal the savings from the wall, but the doctor catches her red-handed. Thinking Anxia told him everything already, Mrs. Shui explains the Dao Rong situation but also swears it's over now and she won't see him again. Sometime later in the middle of the night, Anxia hears screaming, it's Mrs. Shui, who had the doctor died on her while they tried to get frisky. While saying goodbye to his master, Anxia remembers the doctor promised him he'd never be hungry and accepts the responsibility of taking over the shop. This allows him to find the empty tonic box that makes him suspicious. With the doctor gone, Dao Rong has no shame and comes to pick up Mrs. Shui in person, and they both ignore Anxia when he reminds them they should respect the traditional seven days of grieving. Dao Rong and Mrs. Shui go out on a boat ride, during which Mrs. Shui also finds it strange that Dao Rong isn't sad. She realizes then that Dao Rong put poison in the tonic, and this triggers an argument that shakes the boat and causes it to spring a leak. Escape is impossible because they're locked inside, and when they're about to drown, Anxia shows up to save them. However Anxia is still angry about what they did to the doctor, and just a moment of hesitation is enough for him to miss the boat. Overwhelmed with guilt, Anxia runs to a temple to pray for his sins and is found by Abbot Rusong, who makes Anxia kneel for Buddha so he can be punished for killing. Following Buddhist tradition, Anxia spends seven days on his knees repenting until he passes out, still unsure if what he did was right or wrong. When Anxia returns to the shop, he meets Zhao, who manages to get inside even though there was a lock on the door. He's a martial arts student that can use a special technique capable of destroying things through walls, and he's come to the shop to buy some medicine for his master, who he'll be fighting later. Anxia is very impressed by this mighty technique and after doing the sale, he follows Zhao in secret to watch him fight his master Peng. Both men are very skilled and Zhao manages to stay calm even when Peng taunts him, but in the end, Peng beats up his student anyway. Zhao refuses to give up and uses the special technique to land the final hit with props he finds in the area but this also forces him to admit he's been practicing his master's technique behind his back. Peng doesn't mind and admits Zhao is more skilled than his own son, so he'll be the one to inherit the leadership of his school. A happy Zhao starts making his way out, 
but he suddenly falls to the floor, because Pangs waited for the right moment to betray him and kill him with his umbrella to get revenge for his stolen technique and keep his son as his heir. The next day, Pang's son Quitesi shows up at Anxia's shop to get some medicine for his father. He also has some meat that he'd love to cook properly, and Anxia accepts to share his kitchen in exchange for sharing the lunch. When the stew is ready, Quitesi only lets Anxia eat after he shares all the details about the fight. Things get weird when they realize the meat has a special poison that makes them hallucinate and their faces swell, and after Anxia sees the ghost of Mrs. Shui, he decides they should get drunk to forget. Since they don't have money, Anxia and Quitesi go to a temple to steal the donation box. Xu is the monk protecting the box and quickly gives them a lesson by beating them in a battle that ends with their heads against the ground. Quitesi runs away in fear, but Anxia stays to apologize and asks Xu to be his master, but Xu turns him down. The following morning, Quitesi tells Peng about what happened, and Peng immediately realizes that must have been the same Xu he trained with when they were younger and stole a technique from him. Their conversations interrupted when Anxia brings over the medicine order, and after Quitesi quickly kicks him out, he explains to his father it was Anxia that told him about the temple, now Peng thinks Anxia and Xu are working together. Meanwhile Anxia packs his things and says goodbye to the doctor at his altar before returning to the temple to beg Xu to train him again. Azia begins showing he can be useful by sweeping the area, but Xu takes the broom from him and shows him his special cleaning technique before giving it back, explaining even cleaning must be an exercise in focus. Sometime later, a girl approaches Anxia saying her fortune predicted she would meet her savior in the temple. Her biggest wish is to have a baby, and Anxia promises to help her find a way. In the evening, Anxia goes to see Rusong for advice, and they both close their eyes to meet in their headspace. Rusong tells Anxia about a secret room in the temple where men took women to get them pregnant, and he locked it some time ago to protect it. Anxia isn't sure why Rusong finds this amusing, but when he opens his eyes, he finds the key to the room. Afterward, Anxia takes the girl to the room and finally realizes there's a space for them to get frisky. They have a wonderful night together but the girl won't tell him her name because they can't see each other again. Later, after sharing this experience with Xu, Anxia asks him for his story in return. Xu explains that when his old master died, he passed his ape strike technique to him and made him the heir of the school because his son Peng wasn't good enough. Peng was furious and fought Xu until he ran away from the school, and nowadays, Xu is waiting for the right moment to return something to his rightful owner. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted by Peng, who has come to ask for the secret manual with his father's techniques. Xu explains there has never been such a manual, but he's written all he knew in a notebook that he can finally give to Peng to make up for their disagreement. Peng grabs the manual and tosses it into the kitchen fire, prompting Anxia to run to recover it, but Peng quickly jumps in to hit him away. Xu doesn't want things to turn violent and apologizes to Peng for running away all those years ago, now he understands he should have stayed so they could learn together. He also wants to bow in respect, but Peng's still resentful and starts a fight. Their kung fu techniques destroy many parts of the temple, and Xu has to push Anxia out of the way multiple times to stop Peng from attacking him too. Seeing Xu move so fast to take his student outside makes Peng drop the fight and leave the temple, but as soon as the doors close, he reveals he was just pretending and uses his special technique to attack through the wall. A statue explodes and the little pieces go after Xu, who grabs his broom and uses his powers to create a tornado of leaves that acts as a shield. Peng thinks he won and comes back inside to check, prompting Xu to jump on him and restart the fight. When Peng is about to use his special technique again, Xu notices the full moon is out and uses its energy to control the water from a fountain and push his enemy back. Peng's attack isn't completely cancelled though, instead it makes the stream break in two and hit both men at the same time. Peng uses the chance to escape, but he passes out as soon as he makes it home. Quitesi rushes to look for medicine in the drawers and finds a gun next to it, now the memory of the weapon won't leave his mind while he takes care of his father. Meanwhile Anxia finally convinces Xu to teach him his techniques, although for now they start with the theory behind the forces of nature. As thanks, Anxia reveals he did rescue the notebook from the fire and returns it to Xu. Later when Anxia is in bed, he hears a couple of gunshots echoing in the temple and he runs outside only to discover Xu has been shot. A dying Xu wishes to see someone named Cha one last time and give him the notebook, but Anxia doesn't know who that is and takes Xu to see Rusong instead. The monk teaches Xu that this is the result of karma, and now that Xu finally understands how the cycle is closed, his soul leaves in peace after seeing his friend Cha in his heart. Meanwhile Peng wakes up to discover it was his son that shot Xu. A few days later, Anxia goes to the city because he's learned Cha has become a performer at the local theater. After the show is over, Anxia tells Cha what happened, but even when Cha visits the temple and sees the bloodstained clothes he refuses to believe it, especially since Xu never took students before. Anxia shares more details to prove his story, and in return, Cha explains he had met Xu before they joined the Kung Fu school. The two of them had been in the army together, and back then Cha had been just a performer going through withdrawal. When his first battle began, he ran away in fear, but Xu came after him and helped him keep his sanity during the war. Cha wants revenge for the death of his friend, and Anxia tells him it probably was Peng that killed him. Cha still has another show to finish, but he shows up on the stage just to cancel it. 
This angers police commissioner Liren, who had paid extra for good seats for his girlfriend, and now he sends his men to get revenge for this humiliation. It's incredibly easy for Cha to beat up a bunch of cops, and when Liren tries to shoot him, Cha moves fast enough to dodge the bullet and beat him as well. The next day, Liren gets in contact with Peng in order to get revenge together. Liren pretends to arrest Peng and calls Cha to inform him Xu's killer has been caught, so Cha's free to come by tomorrow when they transfer him to prison. Cha accepts, and Peng and Liren get his men ready for a trap. In the evening, Cha and Anxia do a special ritual to bless Cha's spear with Xu's bloodstained shirt. Cha explains that after the two of them trained for years in nature, Xu announced it was time to leave their cave and for Cha to return to the stage because life had to be a balance between nature and enjoyment, and Cha intends to keep on living by those words. The following day, Liren and Quitesi stay in the car with Peng while their men proceed with the ambush, but it's easy for Cha and Anxia to work together and beat them all up in seconds. Then Cha approaches the car and asks Peng for a one-on-one -on -one duel, which begins with the two men fighting each other in their mind space. Their skills are pretty close, but Peng cheats and makes one of his men attack Cha while his eyes are closed, wounding his arm. This isn't enough to stop Xu, who jumps extremely high to use the light of the sun for a special attack with his spear that heavily wounds Peng and corners him against a tree. Cha asks if he really killed Peng, and Peng says he did to protect his son. Suddenly Quitesi shows up with the gun and confesses it was him, causing Anxia to hit him a few times and take the weapon from him, thinking about shooting. Quitesi points out that Xu had seen him yet never said his name, which proves he wanted to end this cycle of revenge. These words inspire Peng to grab Cha's spear and end things, offering his life in exchange for his son so that the new generation can start over without hate in their pasts. At that moment, Liren shoots Cha in the leg before driving away, prompting Anxia and Quitesi to go after him. Anxia fails to stop the car with his jumps, but when Liren makes a bad turn, he finds Cha with his spear, which he uses to send the car into the water and make it explode. Afterward, Anxia returns with Xu to the mountains, where he finishes his training, thanks to finally having experienced both good and evil in his life. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.